Well, welcome to the 700 Club. Today we've got something that might be one of the most important programs we've ever done. And it's one that's kind of under the radar, but it's something that you probably will only hear on the 700 Club. So listen very carefully. Maybe get your friends to tune in because it's dynamite. Well, Islamists made a strong showing in Tunisia's election. And Libya's new leader is talking about Islamic law. That's why some say Islam, not democracy, is dominating the so-called Arab Spring. And it's fueling talk about the possible restoration of what's known as the Islamic Caliphate. Chris Mitchell has more. When Muhammad died 14 centuries ago, the Muslim world needed someone to take the Prophet's place. The Caliphate was the leadership of Islam after the death of Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. The last caliphate was located here in Istanbul, Turkey. For 400 years, Istanbul and the Topkapi Palace behind me was the political center of the Muslim world. From here, the Turkish sultans ruled the Ottoman Empire as caliphs from 1517 until the empire fell after World War I. But in 1924, the Turkish leader Ataturk abolished the caliphate since then, many Muslims dreamed of its return. The major aim of the caliphate is to rule the world. Mm -hmm. And this can be done under the leadership of one caliph who he himself only can declare a holy war, a jihad. Some believe a restored caliphate will precede the Islamic Messiah. While they may disagree on tactics, many modern Islamic groups share the goal of restoring the caliphate. They include the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, Hamas, Hezbollah Tahrir, and the granddaddy of them all, the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood was set up in 1928, uh, uh, four years after the uh, uh, disbanding of the Muslim Caliphate uh, by Ataturk, and their specific uh, mission was to reestablish the Caliphate just four years later. And they've been pursuing that mission ever since. Their goal remains to set up one world Islamic government. The Brotherhood now has a foothold in Egypt, where after the fall of the Mubarak government, it became the country's most organized political party. What the Muslim Brotherhood would like to see is a strong, powerful uh, Islamic world government armed with nuclear weapons, whether those are provided by Pakistan or Iran, or Iran doesn't matter. Uh, and they would be gradually eliminating Christian and Jewish influence, Christian and Jewish governments. Another potential power player who wants to restore the caliphate is Turkish Prime Minister Erdogan. I think Erdogan clearly sees himself as the founder of the new caliphate, the world Islamic government, uh, with Turkey at its center. I think this is what's behind uh, uh, him offering to send the Turkish Navy, for example, to protect a, quote, peace flotilla that would come to Gaza. I'm sure that in his, in, in his heart he's dreaming about the re-establishment of the caliphate. Yeah. He behaves like it. I mean, he can, he can easily push this area into a great war. The threat of war and rise of Islam lead many to say the so-called Arab Spring is a misnomer. I wouldn't call it an Arab Spring. It's far from being an Arab Spring. It's the same kind of winter. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Istanbul, Turkey. It's dynamite. And ladies and gentlemen, mark that as you read the news and you see the Obama administration saying there's nothing wrong with the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, Hillary Clinton saying that the Muslim Brotherhood is modest, a moderate group. Nonsense. It has one goal, and that's to reestablish the caliphate, to reestablish Muslim domination around the world. And of course, if you look at the uh, Iranian view of it is to prepare the world for the emergence of the 12th Imam, uh, the so-called Mahdi, uh, who will come after a period of chaos when the world is in shatters, and then he'll bring about peace, and according to their belief, Jesus Christ will come along and say, uh, you know, you're the man, and I'm just going to here, be here to help you. I mean, it's just absolutely monstrous, and it is, it is the Antichrist. I mean, that's what we're looking at. I mean, it's coming about... And we're not being alarmists and extremists because this is what they say. Listen to the words that these people say, especially what they say in Arabic. And we'll try to get it translated for you as the months go by. But that's the game plan. 
Just watch it when you read your headlines. What happens in Tunisia? What happens in Egypt? What happens in Syria? What happens in Iran? What, what's going to be happening in Iraq as soon as we pull out? What happens in Pakistan? And you read what uh, Karzai said in Afghanistan. He said if it came down to a, show, uh, to a showdown between the United States and Pakistan, he would put Afghanistan on the side of Pakistan against the United States. Now, that's what we're facing. Okay, well, so much for the alarmist, but 